Hey, hey, everybody. Well, I hope you're doing well today. Well, before we start our studies of balance of payments, I think it's super helpful to get a visual understanding of what all of this means because it's almost impossible to, um, to like hold an image in your mind, to like make sense of what's going on in balance of payments. And really, um, to start off with, there's not even really like a, a diagram or a graph that you can look at to to, to help you understand the overall concept. So this video, I'm not going to give you a bunch of, you know, economic definitions and whatnot. We're going to go through a scenario um, with a visual where you can then have something in your mind upon which to hang all the information you're going to get as you go through this unit of study. So here we go. Okay, so here we go. We are going to take a look at the country of Italy, right, in honor of my mother-in-law. And what I want you to realize is that all of these, in the end, the end of the story is that all of these payments, right, that's a payment. Every arrow you see here is a payment. And all of those payments in the end are going to balance out to equal zero. Yeah. How in the world is that going to possibly happen? Well, there are two main components of the balance of payments. Number one is the current account balance inflows and outflows of money, and the other is the financial account, inflows and outflows of money. The, and what we're tracking on here is, the, is, is where the money's going. So if you think back to um, the circular flow model, we are dealing with that upper portion of the circular flow model that's called the foreign sector, and we're tracking the amount of cash, in this case, that's leaving Italy for imports for goods and services and tracking the cash for exports that's coming into Italy. We are tracking the outflows of income from Italy to other countries and tracking the inflows of income from other countries to Italy. And we're tracking the outflows of something called current transfers. Don't worry about what that means yet and inflows of current transfers from other countries all around the world to Italy. Beautiful. And there's a that, so that's current account. Just understand the logic. Don't worry about the details. The financial account is another component of balance of payments. And what I'm going to tell you right now is that if this flow of money over here is negative, this flow of money over here is going to be positive. Or if the flow of money over here is negative, the flow of money over here is going to be positive. Don't worry about why, just have that in your head. In the end, these two things are going to cancel each other out with some help from the, from the uh, official reserves. Okay, so what's going over here in the financial account? This is money that's being invested in other countries, leaving Italy, and this is money being invested from anywhere in the world to Italy. This is the outflow of money to invest in portfolio investments. That means stocks, if you think of it really simply. And this is the inflow of money in portfolios of money, cash coming into Italy for uh, investments in stocks and bonds and things like that. Okay. This is something called the capital account. Now, this is something that gets super complicated, but I'm not going to get into it right now because you don't need to any, be any more complicated than this. But this is the outflow of capital transfers, right, um, to the rest of the world. And this is the inflow of capital transfers into Italy. Okay. So now you get the logic. Now, take a look down here. This is the official reserves account. Okay. This is the... the, the the, the account of the amount of reserves that exist in Italy. Now check it out. If the current account plus the financial account is greater than zero, hey, it doesn't balance. Right. Not yet. If it's greater than zero, then the official reserves will rise. What does that mean? That means that if you think about Think about the colors of these arrows, okay? If in the end, the sum of all of these yellow arrows, because that's cash coming in to 
Italy, is greater than the sum of all of the cash flowing down these yellow arrows, I'm sorry, the white arrows, then in the end, there's going to be more money, more money has piled up in Italy, right? And that's reserves. That's talking about currencies, okay? So there'll be money left over in Italy. That's what I'm saying, okay? So if the current account's greater than the financial account, I'm sorry, if the current account plus the financial account is greater than zero, then at the end, there's going to be extra money hanging out in Italy. We'll get to how it balances in a second. Okay. However, if you look over here, if the current account plus the financial account is less than zero, then the official reserves will fall. What does that mean? Well, first of all, if the current account is greater than the financial account, that is, means that they ran a deficit in Italy. What does that mean? That means that there is more money... It's, there is more money at the end at the end of the year, more money left Italy out of these white arrows, right? Than was replaced by the inflows of cash for all these different categories in the yellow arrows. And therefore, at the end of the year, there, there's going to be few, less reserves. And that makes sense, right? If for some reason the beginning of 2000 and 15, there were, I don't know, 100 euros sitting in Italy. And at the end, there was, there was more money coming into Italy than was going out, then there's going to be like 150 euros sitting in Italy. Okay? But if this in, at, in 2016, beginning of 2016. But if at the beginning of 2015, if, right, there were 100 euros sitting in Italy, but... At the end of the day, more cash left Italy through the white arrows than came in from the yellow arrows, then there is going to be 80 euros left in Italy, which means the official reserves went down, okay? And so if you just understand that logic, you are way ahead of schedule in terms of understanding balance of payments. And then there's one thing down here that I'm just going to say to you, I'm going to layer it into your brain, right? That in the end, the current account plus the financial account plus the capital account. The capital account is this right here, which I have put in the financial account. But there, you can think of them as separately. Or you could just think about it as, you know, current account plus financial account, right, plus the change in reserves is going to equal zero. And we'll talk about why that's true. That will be true later. But I just want you to accept that. Because <laughs> before you have the information in your head, you just need to accept certain things. And that's what I want you to accept. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful in giving you a visual understanding of the balance of payments before you ever have um, the, even the, the, the content or the discourse in your mind. If you have this clear, then you're going to start to be able to apply the discourse to these different places, right? And all of a sudden, it'll become clear. And you'll see at the end of the series, there's a balance of payments, a visual understanding summary in which I give more details to this. Okay? I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.